Hello listeners, hello video viewers, welcome back to the podcast. It's 2024, it's January 2024, and this is my first episode of the year. Of course, I have to begin by wishing you a very happy new year. So here we go. Happy new year. I hope that you celebrated and had a nice time. Um, for some of you listening to this, you don't celebrate new year at the same time as I do. So in that case, happy new year when it happens. Happy old year right? If that's you. If you haven't celebrated New Year yet, happy old year. Uh, but for the rest of you, happy New Year. And yes, this is my first episode of the year. And we're going to start in just a moment. If you're watching the video version of this, you will see some text on the screen. I've changed the colour of the display a little bit. Try I'm trying to make it easier for you to read. That's the idea. If you are listening to the audio version of this episode, uh, then you will find a PDF link in the description. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say that again in a minute. Okay, because I've pretty much written this in advance. And I'm gonna say that in a minute as well. So, okay, it's time to start reading from the PDF. It's time to start reading from my text uh, that I wrote before. Okay, so here we go, let's start doing that now. Okay, all right then, let's do that. Happy New Year, everyone. This is my first episode of 2024, and let's get serious for a moment. Because actually, the purpose of this one is to help you consider where you are with your English. Because that's what this is all about, isn't it? Yes, to encourage you to reflect on your learning of English in 2023, and to approach 2024 with the right mindset, and also, give you loads of advice and tips for how to keep improving your English with this podcast and in plenty of other ways. This episode has mostly been written out in advance, so I'm reading from a script on this one, okay? You'll find the PDF script on the page for this episode on my website, and there is a link in the description wherever you're listening to this. Do you, link in the description. Do you know what that means? Some people don't know what that means. You're thinking, what, what's the description? Sometimes it's called the description or the show notes. That's just the text that you find uh, associated with the episode that you're listening to. If you're on YouTube, just look down. And I think it's you click something that says show more and you can see the, the notes that are written there, like a summary of the episode. And you can put links in there. That's on YouTube. If you're listening in a podcast app, you should find the show notes or episode description. And that's where you'll find the link for the PDF for this episode. Okay, let me just cough for a second. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can just download the PDF free. And I'm not even going to ask you for your email address and then send you loads of emails tempting you to buy my online course, which is only available for a limited period of time for mysterious reasons that aren't fully explained. Right, so don't worry, I'm not going to do that. You can just you can just download the PDF directly, like in the old days of the internet. These days, if you if someone lets you download something like a PDF, normally they're like, "But give me your email address. You have to enter your email address, and I'll send you the link, and then I will send you tons of cleverly written emails to encourage you to to buy something." And why not? You know, why not? People have got to make their living somehow. This is the way uh, things work these days. But anyway, in this particular case, you can just download the PDF without having to enter your email address. Maybe one day when I have an online course, maybe then I'll ask for your email uh, to download a PDF. And then maybe I'll, I'll, I'll email you later and say, hi, yeah, hey, it's Luke. Do you remember the thing? Yeah, it was good, wasn't it? Do you want to buy my e online course? Maybe that'll happen one day, but not today. Anyway, by the way, um, if you prefer rambling episodes with no script, just hang on, okay? Because I'll be doing one of them after I've done this episode. Okay, not today because I'm on a tight time schedule and I've, I'm going to have to leave um, in an hour and a half. Will this episode be less than an hour and a half? I hope so. That's the plan anyway, but we'll see. Uh, but um, yeah, so the plan is to do a rambling episode uh, with... Sorry, the plan is to do this episode now which is fully planned and scripted, and then just do something totally spontaneous in the next episode. So if you like the more spontaneous, um, off-the-cuff episodes, then that's coming soon. Uh, so yes, there is a New Year rambling episode coming soon. Also, there'll be a premium episode coming soon for premium subscribers. 
focusing on some of the language I use in this episode. Okay, so premium subscribers, watch out for some of the words and phrases which are highlighted in a lurid green colour on the PDF. Those bits of vocabulary will come up in a premium episode too. If you're not a premium subscriber, then you can still notice those highlighted phrases. And you can think, hmm, interesting. Okay, there's a bit of vocab. Lurid, for example, the word lurid, a lurid green colour. Hmm, bit of vocab there for me to notice. So if you're not a premium subscriber, you can still notice those highlighted phrases and just consider how much you're missing out by not being a premium subscriber. And of course, if you just can't stand missing out on the magic, then, you know, you could become a premium subscriber. Or maybe if you just want more information about it, just go to teacherluke.co.uk slash premium info. Mm. That's where you get more info about LEP Premium. By the way, I chose that lurid green colour so that it will also show up if you print the PDF in black and white. Okay. Also, it's a way of subtly reminding you to keep noticing vocabulary. It'll, it's You can't really miss it if it's highlighted in a bright green colour. Um, also, I have various other episodes in the pipeline, which I recorded late last year, and they are coming to over the next few weeks, including a couple of Amber and Paul episodes, an episode with Lindsay from All Ears English, one with my friend who works at UNESCO, and some others. So just bear with me, they are coming as well. As usual, I just have so many episodes to publish and things I want to say. Um, I'd love to just publish new episodes like every few days, to be honest, but I don't want to overload you completely. I know that some of you might be happy for me to do that. You might think, yes, please do. New episodes every couple of days, yes, that would be wonderful. Um, but um, uh, really, podcasting wisdom and general life wisdom says that I shouldn't do that, right? First of all, there would just be too many episodes and most people wouldn't really be able to keep up and they'd probably like, oh, I can't keep up with this. Uh, and also it would it would exhaust me, wouldn't it? It's not a very wise idea. And the hard drive on my laptop would, would fill up almost instantly. Uh, anyway, so this episode, uh, what's this episode going to be? Let's get started. First of all, I want to welcome new listeners um, right. Hello, if you're a new listener, because a lot of people will have decided to start listening to a podcast in English this year. So hello, if that's you. So welcome. And also, I want to remind old listeners who I am, <laughs> just in case, because you're so old, your memory doesn't work anymore. I mean, old listeners, I mean, people who've, who've been listening to the podcast for a long time, but old listeners too, as well, you know. So I want to welcome new listeners and remind old listeners who I am and what this is all about. Now, a lot of people will be turning over a new leaf and, and trying to make a fresh start with their English at this time of year. Is that you? Have you made a New Year's resolution to improve your English this year? Maybe you've decided to listen to podcasts in English and here you are. Or maybe you're already a regular listener and you're happy to be back in Lepland with this new episode. In any case, welcome and welcome back. It's good to be doing the first episode of the show in 2024. Here's some information for new listeners and old listeners too, whose memory isn't what it once was. Did you catch that? Here's some information about Luke's English podcast for new listeners and old listeners too, whose memory it wasn't... Oof, I can't even say that. Can you say that? Some information about Luke's English podcast for new listeners and old listeners too, whose memory isn't what it once was. Meaning that for old listeners, their memory is not what it used to be. It's not as good as it was before. Anyway, <laughs> so hello. Forgive me for stating the obvious here, but I'm Luke Thompson and I'm the host of this podcast that you're listening to right now, which is called Luke's English Podcast. It's a podcast for learners of English. I'm Luke, hence the title of the show, Luke's English Podcast. Yes, I am very original and creative, and I worked very hard to come up with that name. Um, in my episodes, I talk about all kinds of stuff and help you learn English. All you have to do is listen. Although if you want, there are plenty of other ways you can use my episodes to work on your English. 
I'll mention some of those things later. I talk about different topics, chat with different guests, tell stories, just ramble about what's on my mind, give advice for learning English, talk about British culture, because I'm from the UK, right, I'm from England. Um, I talk about British culture, such as music, films and comedy. I explain jokes and generally give you something to listen to in English on a regular basis. This is an award-winning podcast, by the way. Also, I've been, I was nominated for a British Council Elton Award a few years ago. Um, and I have a very loyal, enthusiastic and lovely audience who are affectionately called the Lepsters. That's LEP, L-E-P, Luke's English Podcast. So they're Lepsters, yeah. There's also other names for, for listeners. Uh, I've, if, if you're a person who just listens to my podcast, but you never leave a comment, you never get in touch with me, you don't do anything, you just hide in the shadows and just listen, then you are a ninja, okay? And if you are, um, <laughs> if you're someone who listens all the way through to the end of an episode, but you don't survive, right? If you perish um, during the listening process, then you are a skeleton. But hopefully you're not skeletons, right? That's the point there that, you know, most of you, if you, well, hopefully if you listen all the way through to the end that you survive, right? And then you can let me know. You can say, I got to the end, Luke. I'm not a skeleton. That's what that means. If someone says I'm not a skeleton, it means that they listened all the way through to the very end of the episode and they survived. You see, because it's possible to survive. I know it's like 90 minutes long. I can't listen to that. Well, you can, you really can, and you will be fine. Don't worry. You won't, you, you, you'll make it to the end. Um, okay. I'm an English teacher from England. Um, from, I'm from West London and the West Midlands. And you might be thinking, how, if you, how are you from two places at the same time? What is this like quantum, what quantum theory? I don't know. Um, well, yeah, I, I lived in West London and I've lived in the West Midlands. I've been teaching English for nearly 25 years now. Uh, I first taught in Japan many years ago. Have I ever mentioned that, by the way, that I used to live in Japan? Has, have I ever said that on the podcast? By the way, you remember, you get a point every time I say that. Every time I say that I used to live in Japan, you get one point. Then uh, I taught in London for a long time at various language schools in iconic places like Oxford Street, Covent Garden, Waterloo, Holland Park and Hammersmith. Yeah, Hammersmith, that iconic place in London. Um, and these days I live and work in Paris. Yes, the one in France. Bonjour. Um, I went to university in Liverpool a long, long time ago and graduated with a degree in media and cultural studies, which means that I'm very good at watching movies. Um, I have CELTA and DELTA qualifications in the English language. Uh, sorry, not in the English language. I've got CELTA and DELTA qualifications in English language teaching to adults. So don't worry, you're in safe hands here. Okay, you can trust me. I'm fully qualified. Um, I am a professional. I have a particular set of skills, which I've developed over a very long career. Okay, uh, as well as being an English teacher, I'm also a stand-up comedian, which you must have realised already because you can't have failed to notice how funny and witty I am. Um, I do stand-up, which means I go on stage. I stand up on stage in front of audiences and make them laugh usually, hopefully, with hilarious jokes and stories and things. And it always works really, really well. And everyone in the room laughs so much and so hard that they actually die. And then they can never tell anyone else how funny I am, which is why I don't have my own Netflix special. Um, I've been doing stand-up on a semi-professional basis for about 15 years, uh, roughly the same length of time as this podcast, but not as consistently as this, I have to say. Most of the time these days, I perform at comedy shows in Paris in the evenings sometimes, in English, to audiences of expats, English-speaking expats. That's Expats is basically another word for immigrant, right? Just someone who's moved to another country, but... You know, if you're, if you move to France from England, you're an expat. If you move to France from like Africa, then apparently you're an immigrant. I, I know, I don't get it. But anyway, we, you know, we do, I do shows to English speaking people 
or even non-English speaking people, anyone who comes to the show, but often it's sort of tourists, expats, at local Parisians. If you want to hear me talking about my stand-up comedy, you can check out my recent appearance on the Stolaroid Stories podcast. The episode was called The Art of Making People Laugh with Luke Thompson from Luke's English Podcast. And you will find the link uh, on the PDF. Hold on a minute. Hold, hold on a second. All right, let me just add that link. There it is. Okay. Now, I've been doing this podcast for about 15 years now. Not this episode. I mean, it might feel like it already. But um, no, generally, I've been doing the podcast for about 15 years. The show's had over 150 million downloads in total, which is mind-blowing. <laughs> um, it's listened to by people all over the world. And yeah, I'm actually um, very famous, but nobody knows who I am. Does that make sense? No, it, it doesn't. But somehow it is still true uh, that I'm famous, but, but no one knows me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but if I got all my listeners together in one place, right, if I gathered them all, then I'd be able to fill a few football stadiums, right, with them. But that's never going to happen, is it? And I'm not even very good at football, so it wouldn't be a very good idea anyway, would it? No. Uh, there are audio versions and video versions of this podcast. Okay, got it? Audio version, video version. Um, you can get the audio version in podcast apps. And you can get the video on YouTube. Now, let me just explain that to the... Uh, the <clears throat> let, me, let me start that sentence again. Let me explain that to the uninitiated. Okay? Let me just explain what I just said to the uninitiated, people who are, have not been initiated into the ways of podcast apps and YouTube videos and stuff. Now, just a note here. <clears throat> remember, remember I said the, the words and phrases highlighted in green? That was one of them, the uninitiated. Right, get the PDF from the episode page on my website or in the description, and you can see those highlighted bits. I'll add them all in a list at the end of the episode as well because I'm nice. You're welcome. I'll explain them in a premium episode coming soon to help you remember them and also use them and pronounce them, okay? So you can listen to the audio podcast in any podcast app on your phone. And this is the way that most people listen to my episodes. For example, using Apple Podcasts, which is the most popular one. Also Spotify, Pocket Casts, and so on. Now, I imagine that people do something like this, right? Is this you? So this is what I think people do. They get up in the morning. Now, I think most people get up in the morning. If you don't get up in the morning, you might be dead. You might want to check that. Okay, just make sure that you're still alive or you're just sleepy. I don't know. Anyway, most people get up in the morning, stretch, have a shower, right? Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't. You don't have to. It's okay. Some people prefer to have a shower in the evening. That's a whole. That's a whole other other question, Luke. That's a whole other topic of conversation. Shower in the in the morning. Shower before you go to bed. Which one? Which one's best? Anyway, people get up in the morning. They stretch. They wash. They question their life choices. They eat breakfast. Maybe they get the kids ready for school. They go to work or college or something. And at some point, they get their phone out put their headphones on, open up their podcast app of choice, right? Look at their list of podcast subscriptions, tap on Luke's English podcast and start listening to a new episode or continue listening to the one they started the day before or the day before that or something. All right. That's what I think most people do. Other people might just stay at home because, well, what's the point of leaving the house really, you know, and maybe get their phone out connect it to their Bluetooth speaker or something and listen to my podcast and maybe do something really exciting like housework or something like that. Or maybe they, maybe if you've got one of those smart speakers, you can say, hey, Alexa, play the latest episode of Luke's English podcast. And Alexa go, you know, Alexa does it. I don't know. Um, 
So that's how to listen to my episodes on a, in, in a podcast app on your phone. If you're already initiated into the world of podcasting, that all might strike you as being very obvious. But you'd be surprised at the number of people who don't understand what podcasts are, how they work, or even how the word podcast is spelled or indeed pronounced. A lot of people don't know. Podcast. All right, got it? Podcast. Podcast. Not postcard or pot cat. I've said all these things before, but you know, people just keep getting it wrong. So I've got to, I've got to go through it again. Now I understand it's all right. I understand it can be a tricky word actually, right? It, it can genuinely be a tricky word. It's a relatively new word. And in terms of pronunciation, podcast, there are a couple of tricky consonant clusters in there, right? Podcast, right? Consonant clusters, like the bit where the D, the D and K combine, D -k. podcast, right? The D -k part, that bit, and where the S and T combine, st, podcast. It's actually tricky stuff. Podcast. Try it again. Podcast. 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 Not postcast podcast okay not podcast either well it's not so bad if you're saying podcast that's all right but it's actually podcast podcast okay luke's english podcast not lux not lux english podcast not luck that's not my name i'm not mr luck or look i've heard those jokes a million times look it's luke no no just stop okay Luke's English podcast. Now, the word podcast, did you know this? The word podcast is actually a combination. It's a port mon portmanteau word. Portmanteau. It's a combination word of the word broadcast and the word iPod. Because it's a broadcast on your iPod, a podcast, right? It's a kind of audio broadca broadcast like a radio show, right? So that's a broadcast. Uh, radio is broadcasted, right? Radio signals are broadcasted. So radio is broadcasted through radio signals from a radio tower thing, right? The radio waves are sent out or broadcasted into the air and picked up by your radio. But with a podcast, the audio is sent out via the internet and you get it and put it on your iPod, although nobody actually uses iPods anymore. It's all mobile phones now, isn't it? So, podcast, may, may, it might as well be called a phone cast because I broadcast my show to your phone. It's not a phone call because that's not how it works, is it? <laughs> I don't just, right, I'm going to do a new episode. I think I'll just call everyone one by one. Um, I don't just call you and start talking. Hello. Yeah. Have you got, have you got an hour and a half? Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, this is episode 863. Are you ready? No, that's not how it works. I don't just call you and start talking. I could do that if I had your number, but that would be a very inefficient way of doing this. If I had to call you all one by one and say this to each person, I called again and again. No, th no. Thank goodness that's not how it works. It's not a phone call and it's not a phone cast, even though you listen on your phone, unless you listen on your computer on my website or something, or you actually do listen on an iPod because you're still using one. Uh, if you are still using an iPod, leave a comment in the description somewhere to say that you're still using an iPod. So anyway, it's not a phone cast, it's a podcast. All right, now that should be clear. If you don't know how to subscribe to the audio podcast, just download a podcast app on your phone. They're completely free. Uh, that's podcast apps, not phones. Phones are expensive. Uh, I recommend Pocket Casts. Uh, just go ahead and download Pocket Casts free from the App Store on your phone. Install it, then open it, then search for Luke's English Podcast, not Lux English Podcast. Luke's English Podcast. Then tap subscribe or add 
or whatever the equivalent is in your language to subscribe and my show will be saved in your list of subscriptions and you'll always be able to go back to the app to listen to my latest episodes when they are published and the entire back catalogue and your life will improve just a little bit. Certainly a step in the right direction anyway. Switch on notifications on your phone and your phone will tell you when I've published a new episode. Happy days. <laughs> um, one of the advantages of listening to the audio podcast on your phone is that you can do other things while you listen and people tell me that they listen while travelling, working out in the gym, doing housework, running or walking in the countryside, driving and even at work or school when they should be doing something else. Uh, I expect some people listen while doing incredible things like flying planes, recovering from a general anaesthetic after having surgery, or operating the safety systems of a nuclear power station. This is the wonderful thing. You can, you can multitask while listening to a podcast on a podcast app. I also publish video versions of these episodes on YouTube. And it's usually the same content as the audio versions, but often the audio versions have even more content uh, because sometimes I ramble a bit at the beginning and end of episodes and in the middle, to be honest. And those bits don't always end up in the video versions. Okay, so if you want all of it, then, you know, the audio podcast is where you can go. But uh, yes, you can also catch most of what I'm doing on YouTube. Um, my YouTube channel has nearly has 1 million subscribers now, which I find incredible, really. Uh, not all my episodes get a million views, of course, except the ones called Learn English with a Short Story, which are particularly popular on the platform. The advantages of the video versions are that you can see me while I speak. Do you consider that to be an advantage? I don't know. I don't know if it is, but apparently some people think so. You can see my body language, facial expressions, and the movements of my mouth. For the more visually oriented people, that is a good thing. Uh, there are also automatic subtitles on YouTube, which are getting better all the time. And I often show text on the screen um, while I record, so you can read and listen at the same time. Uh, that text is usually also available on my website for the audio listeners. But again, the video versions often have uh, less content than the audio versions, and you do have to basically stay looking at the screen the entire time, don't you? Whereas with the audio episodes, you can just put your headphones in, put your phone in your pocket, and just do something else, like fishing, or taking your dog for a walk, or if you prefer dogging and taking your fish for a walk. I mean, it's your life. You can do what you want, can't you? Um, my episodes can be quite long, but this shouldn't be a problem, really. Whoever, who said it was a problem? Okay, no one. Anyway, it shouldn't be an issue because you can just pause the episode whenever you want and then do something else. And when you return to your podcast app, and indeed YouTube, if you're signed in, just pause, do something else, come back and find that episode again. The app will remember where you stopped and you can continue from that point. YouTube does exactly the same thing if you're signed into it with your Google account. These things are clever. These apps, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Pocket Casts and so on, they will remember where you stopped. You don't have to start again from the beginning. You can just carry on from the point where you stopped. Another reason I like Pocket Casts is because when you pause, it backs up a few moments. It kind of goes back a few moments and lets you listen to the last few seconds before you're carrying on. So it kind of puts you back in the right moment. So you can just chill out about the whole, your episodes should be 28 minutes long, no more, no less, Luke, thing. You can just relax about that now. Just listen to 28 minutes, then stop. Then listen to another 28 minutes the next time, you see? So long episodes aren't really an issue because you can listen to as much as you like, stop and do something else, then carry on where you stopped before. But look, I know, having said that, I do try to keep the length of my episodes under control. Okay, I don't want them to be too long. I don't want to do excessively long episodes. It just happens. But, the, you know, the fact is, I just have... I just have 
uh, what is what, what have I written here? The fact is, I just have that I want to say, and I find it hard. I have stuff. I just have stuff that I, I want to say, and I find it hard to shut up, so I need all that time. That's all right. It's okay, isn't it? Now, for me, these episodes, right, these episodes of my podcast are similar to English lessons that I do at school, except obviously in English lessons, there's a lot more teaching involved. It's not just me talking. That's That wouldn't be good. But, you know, in terms of the length, right, it's similar to kind of English lessons. That's what I've done always in my career. Lessons in the classroom are usually at least 90 minutes long, often more, uh, English lessons in a language school are very rarely less than one hour long. So it's a similar story with my episodes. That's kind of how I feel about it. Also, I have a premium subscription. Have I mentioned that before? I don't think I have, have I? No, I haven't. I definitely haven't mentioned the premium subscription. Hey, everyone, I have a premium subscription. It's called Luke's English Podcast Premium. Forgive me for mentioning it again. It's just that the modest amount of money that I make from it helps me to feed two starving children and one wife and to heat our home which otherwise would be cold and it allows me to buy microphones and guitars and things all essential purchases of course anyway luke's english podcast premium costs just four dollars a month which is the price of like a nice coffee right a tall coffee from starbucks or something or a, from a hipster cafe once a month and you know and the the price has the price has the price gone up uh, with in line with inflation? Has the price gone up? No, it hasn't. Starbucks have raised the price of their bizarrely named coffees. The fuel you put in your car is more expensive than it used to be, but Luke's English podcast remains the same despite all all, all those things. And and it also LEP Premium gives you the access to extra episodes which focus on teaching you vocab, grammar, and pronunciation. It's not just bonus extra con... It's not just like outtakes and offcuts. It's actually fully realised um, content for teaching you stuff. So my podcast has two branches, the free episodes and the premium episodes. The free episodes, this is what I described before, me talking alone or with guests about things which I hope you will just find interesting and entertaining to listen to as part of your effort to get plenty of English into your brain via your ears. The free episodes are the ones which are available free in audio podcast format or YouTube video format. The premium episodes extra episodes published every month and also available in a podcast app on your phone. When you sign up, you can add the premium episodes to your podcast app. Last year, I published over 30 premium episodes, so that's two or three episodes per month. Um, this is not just bonus content or outtakes or something. These are carefully prepared and thought through lessons in which I help you build your English all the information about my premium subscription is on my website at teacherluke.co.uk slash premium info. Forgive me for promoting myself, but, you know, I do have to put food on the table. Um, the main difference between the two branches is that the free episodes are all about input, right? Just giving you just things to listen to. And the premium ones are much more about teaching you directly. In the free episodes like this one today, I want to give you something to listen to in English, which is made for you, um, which is entertaining, interesting and authentic to help you listen more, listen for longer periods and listen long term because that's very good for your English. Sometimes I ramble and just share my thoughts with you in a kind of stream of consciousness way. Sometimes I talk with guests, including my friends and family and other people who I hope will have interesting things to say on the show. Uh, I talk about a variety of topics. I tell stories and so on. In the premium episodes, I tend to focus on teaching you things, and this usually means vocabulary, explaining, highlighting, demonstrating, clarifying words and phrases, showing you how words and phrases are actually used in sentences with collocations and other little important details. I also deal with grammar sometimes and pronunciation every time, mainly giving you something to use for listen and repeat practice so you can regularly repeat after me, but also giving you insights into the pronunciation system in English in various ways. So the focus is on teaching you language bit by bit in the premium side, on the premium side. Sometimes these two branches cross over and I end up doing premium type stuff on the free podcast, so explaining 
vocabulary in short story episodes, for example, or doing free podcast stuff in premium episodes. So that would probably be rambling episodes or short story episodes. And as a basic foundation, I want you to remember that I've been teaching English for most of my adult life now. And so it's deeply ingrained in me. And in fact, I couldn't really stop teaching English even if I tried. And so even when I'm just talking to you, I'm still teaching you. There's always that intention there to help you notice language, to engage with this language, to aid you somehow. So even when I'm just talking with seemingly no focus, there is a focus. Ha ha ha. Like, he's, he's unfocused. Ah, no. No, I'm not. Um, there is a focus and a method in the background, which is to help you connect with English as it is spoken. English as a living language and English which is a medium for making connections with people and for expressing yourself. Okay, I'm going I'm to sort of move on from this bit in a minute. I'm always attempting to reach out to you through the things I say and sort of grab you and sh just shove English straight into your ears, but in a nice way. Also, I, l I just love doing this podcast and hopefully my enthusiasm will kind of rub off on you and will encourage you in your journey. Um, I could continue to ramble on about, uh, about this kind of stuff for ages, about the benefits of listening to English podcasts long term, but I've, I've done that plenty of times before. Just have a look back at my episode archive and see what you can see. By the way, <clears throat> I wrote most of this, the, the stuff that I'm saying here, I wrote most of this over the last few days of the school holidays. It's Friday today. It's the last day of the school holidays. Everyone goes back to work and school on Monday. Here in France, we've had two weeks. And uh, the, this last week, we've been at home. The first week, we were in England at my parents' place. Um, and But then this last week, I've been at home. And I've mostly been looking after uh, our baby son. He's six months old. So I've just been doing a lot of carrying him, lifting him up, uh, wiping his face and his his T-shirt or his sweater, just cleaning him up, feeding him, putting food in and cleaning up the mess that happens afterwards, trying to make him sleep, playing with him, just gazing at, at how adorable, just gazing at him and just, wondering how adorable, uh, thinking about how cute he is and stuff like that. I've been doing a lot of that. But then in moments when I, I was able to, for example, when my baby son was asleep or when my wife took the kids for a routine checkup at the doctor and I had some time to write down some thoughts which had been building up in my head during the Christmas holiday, that's when I wrote these ideas down and have edit edited them and added to them a bit since then. Okay, so this is all stuff I wrote previously. So, finally, let's get onto the subject which was written in the title of this episode. Maybe I should rename the episode Welcome Back to LEP slash You and Your English in 2023 and 2024. I think I'll probably rename it that to account for all of that extra stuff I've just said at the top of the episode or the first half. So you and your English in 2023 and 2024. Now I'm going to talk about you and your English over the last 12 months and into the forthcoming 12 months. Usually in the new year period, I do some kind of new year episode. And so I've been thinking, what can I say to my audience that will put them in the right mental space to help them learn English with my podcast in 2024? What inspiring words of wisdom can I impart? What sage-like advice can I give? And after I lowered my expectations for myself and realised that I wasn't some sort of mystical guru, um, I, I, I just started writing and this is what came out. Listen carefully and hopefully, hopefully, not hopefully, that's not how you pronounce that, it's hopefully, hopefully you will get swept up in what I'm saying and the outcome will be that you'll get a renewed sense of positivity and possibility for your English this year. Or maybe you'll just have a nice relaxing sleep. I don't know. Hopefully it'll be good for you either way. Just be careful, please, if you're driving or operating heavy machinery while listening to this. Remember, there's a PDF for all of this. We know! You've said it a hundred times. You can download it from my website. Just click the link in the show notes 
Okay, so it's the new year period. This is a time when we, we look back and survey the year that we've just completed. <laughs> and um, then look forward to the forthcoming 12 months and consider how we're going to spend that time. And I invite you to do that with me here in this episode. This is a podcast for learners of English. Did you, you, yeah, you know. So we're going to focus on English, of course. In this episode, I want to encourage you and help you to take stock of your English learning at this moment in time. First, let's look back and consider the last 12 months and your English. So over the last 12 months, here are some questions. Over the last 12 months, what kind of progress have you made in your English? What has worked for you? What have you done that has had a positive impact on your English? What were some of the positive experiences and moments that you had in 2023? What about negative experiences too? What can you learn from them? Little grammar pause. Stop. Grammar time. Now note that I said over the last 12 months there, and then I used present perfect tense. Over the last 12 months, what progress have you made? Did you notice that? If I had said in 2023, instead of over the last few months, if I'd used the time expression in 2023, then it would be past simple, right? In 2023, what progress did you make or what worked for you? This is just because over the last 12 months is an unfinished time period. You see, it includes now. Over the last 12 months means from 12 months ago up until now. So it's connected to now. So that's why we can use present perfect tense with that time expression because we're, we're talking about an unfinished time period or a period that's connected to now. You see, what have you done in 2023? No, what did you do in 2023? But what have you done over the last few months? That's okay. Um, for more details about Present Perfect, in fact, everything you ever wanted to know, then listen to Premium Series 12, P12. That's a premium episode. Did I mention my premium subscription again? Did I? I did. Okay. So those questions again, over the last 12 months, what kind of progress have you made in your English? What has worked for you? What have you done that's had a positive impact on your English? What were some positive experiences that you had? What about negative uh, experiences and what can you learn from them? Okay. All right. Um, so perhaps you, thinking about those questions, perhaps you have no clear sense of what you've done or whether it's been positive or negative. You're just like, uh, <sighs> don't know, really, Luke? You know, if that's the case, if you're thinking, uh, I don't know, actually. Now, that probably means that, A, you haven't really done much with English. And this doesn't just mean studying in the traditional way, but just using English either in a productive way by speaking or writing or a receptive way by reading or listening. That just means that there hasn't really been much English in your life for the past 12 months. It could mean that. Or B, you're just not very mindful. You're not being very mindful about your relationship with English or the things you do in relation to your English. Perhaps you're not really aware of the ways that you're learning this language. Um, you listen to my episodes, you do other things in English sometimes, but you don't really reflect on it all in an objective way or an academic way. That might be the case. If you, if you, you, know, if you just don't really know answers to those questions I gave you before. To be honest, I doubt that you fit the description I just mentioned. I think most of my audience are pretty aware of their English. Um, and in fact, maybe you are very conscious of it and take quite a metacognitive approach to it. Oh, that's a nice word, isn't it? Maybe, maybe you do take a, you, maybe you have all these metacognitive strategies. Maybe you're constantly analyzing and strategizing the way that you learn English, kind of looking at it objectively and applying different methods. Maybe you're doing that. In any case, this now is a moment when I invite you to be mindful about your English. Okay, just to think about it. Maybe you feel like you haven't really noticed a significant improvement in your English recently, which is a very common feeling. Is that you? 
Uh, are you waiting for some kind of breakthrough moment? Do you feel like you're on a long plateau? Do you feel like you made significant progress a while ago, but nothing has happened more recently? Is that you? Or maybe not. Maybe you're currently really excited because you've discovered new abilities, new English powers, like a superhero in the first half of their superhero origin movie or something. Like, with these new English powers, I could become a superhero. I could become, what, fluent man or woman, fluent person. I don't know. But it's it's very common to get stuck in the so-called intermediate plateau. And if that is the case for you, then I will say these things. Don't give up. Don't stop. Keep going. The progress might not be obvious to you, but it's probably still happening and will be revealed later. You just have to be willing to stick with it. Sometimes you get stuck in a rut or stuck in a routine and it feels like you're going over the same ground and you're not climbing to the top of any mountains or getting any significant feelings of reward, like moments of triumph or glory. But that's okay, you can't have those moments all the time. Sometimes they are few and far between. Sometimes those breakthrough moments in language learning or those meaningful moments of magic are rare. But keep going. Sometimes there is a lot of progress being made, but it's under the surface and you just don't notice it. Language learning can be a weird thing. It can be hard to see it happening. It can be invisible, but that doesn't mean it's not happening. Uh, with English, you have to put in a lot of hours, you have to absorb a lot of language, and you have to do plenty of practice. Spending a lot of time on it is necessary, and so you have to see the bigger picture. Imagine it like a long journey. There might be times on that journey where you climb to very high points, like the top of a hill or mountain, and you get a clear, dramatic sense of achievement. But at other times, you have to travel along a long, flat plane, and it can feel like you're not really moving at all. But keep going. You're making progress, but you might not be aware of it. It's not all going to be moments of glory, and sometimes your progress is not fully visible to you, but it is happening. You also have to fail quite a lot. You've got to get things wrong a lot before you come back and get them right. Uh, this can make you feel disheartened, as if you just keep making mistakes. But keep going. Don't stop. This is all part of the process. People don't improve their language learning because they give up, right? The people who don't improve, they don't improve because they give up. So keep listening. Keep doing whatever you're doing. Stay in the game. Keep your English alive in 2024. And there will come a time or a moment when the time you've spent with it will pay off somehow. At the very least, you're understanding everything I'm saying, right? You're understanding this, aren't you? Yes? I think so. You're understanding me, and you're also noticing that I'm using certain phrases and expressions, aren't you? Have you been paying attention to that stuff? As I said before, I will sum them up for you later. Not all of them, but a lot of them. I'm talking about some of the little phrases I've just used. You know, the ones which are highlighted in that lurid green colour on the PDF like breakthrough moments, or few and far between, or disheartened. I'll sum, up, uh, I'll sum them up later, help you properly understand them, remember them, and pronounce them too, in a premium episode. So you're noticing those things, you're hearing them, aren't you? It's all going in, that's all fuel or food for your English, you know. And the more you're exposed to English as a living thing like this, the better your position is as a learner of English. The better prepared you will be for the moments when you have to open your mouth and produce the language, or when you're on the spot and you're in conversation with someone and you have to understand what's coming out of their mouth and then you're suddenly having to respond and these bits of English come to you seemingly from nowhere right? Have you, has that happened to you? Just like, you'll just be talking and suddenly, where, did the, where are these phrases coming from? These structures, where is this coming from? Um, and these, the, yeah, these bits of English come to you from nowhere. Well, that's all thanks to the fact that you've been keeping your English alive. And, it, and at the very least, listening to this podcast, other podcasts are available, and keeping your ears open. 
If you feel stuck at the intermediate plateau, keep going, keep the faith. Realise there is progress being made, but you might not notice it every day. Keep your chin up. But also consider shaking things up a bit, adopting some new habits maybe, and perhaps give yourself a challenge, maybe some kind of speaking challenge, or, the, or, or just change the kinds of practice that you're doing, or perhaps add a bit of discipline into your routines with some other little exercises you could do. I'll mention some ideas for that later in this episode. So what have you been doing with your English? What, what have you been doing? Now, bear in mind that in language learning, anything is probably better than nothing right? So even if the only thing you've been doing in English is to listen to podcasts sometimes, watch some stuff uh, in English, um, or occasionally speak it when the need arises, then fine, that's still good. It's better than nothing. Um, also, if you've been listening to all of my episodes, I must say that that puts you in a select group of extremely special people, okay? Not everyone listens to podcasts in English, you know. So if you're in public right now, if you're just out in public or on the bus or something, have a look around, right? Have a look around, just have a look at some of the other people you can see, just people living their lives. Have a look around. How many of these other people that you can see around you, how many of them listen to Luke's English podcast, do you think? Or any other podcast for that matter in English? Yeah, not that many. Some of these just normal people. What are they doing with themselves? Yeah, but not you. No, you're one of the special ones. <laughs> you're part of that elite group of people who have access to this exclusive and slightly secret world, the world of learning English podcasts. You're one of the ones who not only knows what a podcast is, but also how to pronounce it how to spell it, and also how to listen to it regularly. Anyway, listening to podcasts is definitely good for your English, even if it is the only thing you do. But I recommend doing more than just listening. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, this podcast is best consumed as part of a balanced diet, which means that it's the, it works best if you're doing listening and other things. Now, perhaps the worst things for your English, well, probably the worst thing for your English would be to, like, chop your head off, right? It's got to be the worst thing. But so, so obviously, except for that, with, with your head still attached to your body, I think probably the worst things for your English are things like this. So A, doing absolutely nothing in English at all, of course, and B, getting into a negative mindset in which you tell yourself that your English is no good. Oh, God, no, I'm rubbish at knock. You know, that sort of thing telling yourself that your English is no good or that you just can't do it or that you're just one of those people who just simply doesn't have what it takes to use this language effectively. You look at other people who can speak English well and just think there's a difference. There's a, there's a genetic difference. I think that I'm, I lack, like, the, there's a gene that I don't have or I don't know what it is, but I just don't have what it takes. I'm, you know, no, that's not the case. Never mind those negative thoughts they will not help. They will not help you learn a language. So try not to say those things to yourself. Give yourself a break in 2024. Everyone is naturally able to learn a language. So you just have to maintain some good habits, a positive mental attitude, a sense of enjoyment, and perhaps a sense of drive as well to push things further and to kind of force you to to do things that you might not be doing you know if you're feeling a bit lazy or, or something so you have to have the habits the attitude and the drive so what have you been doing in english what has worked for you right can, can you recognize the things that have a helped you to make progress b caused you to feel good about your english what have been those things Helped you make progress? Have there been any moments where you've felt like you've made a step in the right direction? Any things that you've been doing? Um, what have, what's made you feel good about your English too? How can you put your best foot forwards and repeat some of the successes of the last year and build on them and generally move in the right direction towards growth, progress and prosperity in your English 
but in your life too, because it's all part of the same thing. So let's try to maintain a positive cycle in 2024, where one good thing causes you to feel a bit more positive about your English, leading to a growing sense of confidence, which causes you to step outside your comfort zone a little bit more easily and do something else with a bit more success, which again feeds into your positivity and sense of achievement. And this continues in a generally upward trajectory. Let's take a quick break here. Let's take a little break. Little break. Okay. I'm going to have a glass of water, a cup of water. Okay, I'm back. I've hyd I'm, I'm hydrated. Uh, maybe you are too. Let's continue. So to keep this simple, again, let's consider these questions. What have been the good moments in your English learning over the last 12 months? What were those situations? What exactly did you do? What happened? What caused you to feel an improvement in your English and the way you feel about your English? Can you repeat those successes and build on them in the coming months? And if there were negative things, experiences or feelings in relation to your English, how uh, can you learn from them? To demonstrate this a bit, let me reflect on my learning of French, which admittedly I have not been engaging with properly. Okay. And there you see uh, my somewhat negative attitude towards my relationship with French, revealing the frankly unhealthy condition of my French language learning. I mean, I've just been talking about trying to think positively, but I really need to take this advice too, because my own narrative in my head about me and my French, it's, it always goes negative. Just there, instantly, I mention my French and I'm like, oh, you know, I've, it's very unhealthy, you know, da, da. You know, I really need to try and turn that round. I've talked about this before as well. But anyway, let me reflect on my French here and consider my answers, like my answers to the questions which I have above. Here are some notes now, which I'll expand on. So in terms of experiences that I've had that were good, that were positive, so recently, my wife and I attended a cooking class. Okay, it was just before Christmas. And uh, my wife, who's very lovely and thoughtful, decided it would be a good idea and fun thing for us to do to attend a cooking class. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's not she wasn't going, oh, my God, I'm li I live with an English man. I need to help him learn how to cook. No, actually, I do cook quite a lot. And she is very complimentary about my cooking. Thank you very much. Uh, but no, she said, because there's, there's a place in um, in the centre of Paris called Italy, not Italy. I don't want to confuse you if you if you don't know geography. You're like, wait a minute, what? Italy is in the centre of Paris. No, 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 no. <laughs> Italy is a country in Europe. France is another country, and Paris is the capital city of that country. And in Paris, there is a place called Italy. It's spelled E A T A L Y right? Not Italy, Italy. See what they've done? It's a place with lots of restaurants and food shops. It's like an Italian food centre. It's amazing, right? High five if you know about Italy. High five. They've got, they've got them in Italy as well, surprisingly enough. Um, and so Italy, it's a place where you can go to eat Italian food. It's not Italy, Italy. See? Clever name, isn't it? <laughs> um, so it, it was at Italy and it was a, a cooking class in, in the evening uh, with um, like a f about maybe 10 other people. Um, and we learned how to make a delicious truffle risotto. Oh, mm, absolutely delicious. Um, yeah, so we learned that was that was a fantastic experience. It really was. So we, there was a table, a big table in the middle. We had a chef. A uh, French chef who uh, specialised in cooking Italian food. I don't know, Italians, how do you feel about that? A French chef specialising in Italian food. You're thinking, this is fantastic. This is, what could be wrong with that? Nothing. Um, it's not football. It's not football. It's not teams. It's, it's food. It's like just everyone can eat anything and cook anything. It's, it's fine, isn't it? Um, anyway, so big table in the middle. Loads of like cooking stations, you know, uh, cookers, hot plates, sinks, chopping boards, like really nice, um, sharp 
uh, kitchen knives, all the right equipment, um, aprons. We all put these nice aprons on. It was a very professional, lovely environment to, to practice cooking. Uh, the chef served us all this lovely Italian Prosecco. So we're drinking Prosecco. We're, you know, um, chopping up onions and shallots and stuff like that and chopping up garlic and frying and cooking up a broth. And, and, and everyone's at the beginning, right? Everyone's standing around this big table. The chef kind of does his introduction. Of course, it's all in French. Now, often in those sorts of situations, those kind of social situations, I I feel kind of anxious, right? I do I get a lot of anxiety in those situations when it's all in French because I'm struggling to understand what's going on. It's funny, like, uh, m my French is weird because um, sometimes I feel like I understand French with the Jedi mind trick. Just, I just sort of don't really know how I understand it because I don't, feel like I know that much vocabulary and I feel like I don't really have that that much grammar like you know if I was to do grammar exercises in terms of structuring a sentence and knowing all of the different past forms and you know all that all the conjugations and stuff I'm, I'm really not good at that because I haven't been disciplined there were there was a time when I used to do that I used to I'd have got I've got a big book of conjugations and I used to go through the exercises and I used to do it on a, in, in an app in my spare time but I found it so so incredibly boring and also so um fruitless I'm just such a bad example of all the things I just said and it, I'm, I'm an example I'm you know what's that joke what's that joke that people that joke that I've done on the podcast which is like um you're not completely useless. Don't worry, you're not completely useless. You can always serve as a bad example. So that's what's going on here, I suppose. I'm, my French is a kind of, you know, here's not what to, what you shouldn't do. Anyway, so I'm normally quite anxious, but I just decided. So this is one of the things that I, one good thing is that I've made up my mind when I went into the room. I said, right, no, I'm going to be fine. Okay, I'm just deciding to go with this and enjoy this. This is a, an evening for us and I'm just going to really enjoy this and I'm really going to enjoy interacting in French. I don't care if I'm crap, if I make a mistake, it's going to be a nice congenial, friendly atmosphere. It's, it's just going to be fun. So that was good. So positive. I went in with a positive intention. So the chef was talking. Now I, I sort of understood I understand a lot of what people say, but I just don't know how I understand it because I couldn't write it all down correctly. But so that's why I say I understand just by the Jedi mind trick. I just somehow follow the gist of what people are saying. And then he asked everyone to introduce themselves. So luckily I was not first, um, you know, I wasn't the first person, but we went, we went around the table, people introduced themselves. There were maybe five or six people before me and at that point, I was like, right, okay, prepare, mentally prepare yourself, Luke. They were all introducing myself th themselves. They were introducing themselves. And I was practicing, literally running through what I was going to say in my head. You know, uh, bonjour, uh, moi, uh, je suis Luke, blah, 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 blah. Actually, bonsoir, not bonjour. Um, and, you know, je viens d'Angleterre, mais je... Beats EC and blah blah blah, all this kind of stuff sounds so basic. It was actually quite good. I did better than I just did now. Um, and I noticed little things as well. I noticed that when they introduced themselves, they all said, Moi, je suis blah blah blah. I think that's what it was. Hold on, I need to make a little correction there. So, no, they weren't saying, Moi, je suis, and then the name, like, Moi, je suis Luke. They weren't saying that. In fact, it was moi c'est Luke. Like for example, moi c'est Julien, moi c'est Florian, moi c'est Elodie, moi c'est Marie. Now in English, that is me, it's, and then the name, like me, it's Luke, which, you know, is, is kind of, it strikes me as being a bit odd. You know, if I look at it from the point of view of English, in English, we would say, you know, I'm Luke right? Or my name is Luke. Hi, everyone. My name's Luke. Hi, everyone. I'm Luke. But in French, they were, if I translate it directly, they were saying, me, it's Luke. 
right? Like me, it's Julian. Me, it's Elodie. Me, it's Mary, right? Moi, c'est Elodie. Moi, c'est Marie. And that was interesting because that's definitely not what, um, you know, we all get taught at school or anything like that. Uh, but that is actually how French people introduce themselves. So they were all saying that. Moi, c'est Richard. You know, me, it's Richard. Now, that does seem a bit strange or seemed a bit strange. But I thought to myself there and then. I mean, I've noticed this stuff before. I mean, you might be thinking, Lou, introductions, really, that's so basic. That's like lesson number one. I know it is. But still, in the real world, even basic things like that can actually be rather complex when you actually, you know, when you're dealing with the way people actually do it in the real world, you know? Uh, so I made note of it. I made a mental note of like, ah, ah, yeah. Because normally, maybe I would just be saying, bonjour, je suis Luke, or je m'appelle Luke. I'm Luke. My name is Luke, right? I'm called Luke. But um, I was like, no, I'm definitely going to copy what they're doing, even though it doesn't come naturally to me. I'm going to do what they do. And that's exactly what I did. So I copied them all, right? I copied what they said, and I prepared myself in advance, right? Bonsoir, moi, c'est Luke. And then I continued. And it all came out quite well. I was actually quite surprised with myself and quite happy. Because I as we were going, as they were going around introducing themselves, saying a few things about themselves, I was like running it through in my head, you know, working out what I was gonna say. The rough translation was, Hi, I'm Luke. I think I tried to make some sort of I tried to allude at making a bit of a joke, like I'm from England, so I thought it would be a good idea to learn how to cook. You know. Um <laughs> But I actually did quite well. I was perf happy with my performance in English. Not that it was a performance, but I mean, happy in it, in, in happy with my performance as if I was a, a footballer who'd been happy with his performance. I think I played quite well, you know. So, Luke, how do you feel about your performance today at the uh, cooking class in French? Well, obviously, you know, I've gone out there and I've, you know, I've, I've tried to be positive. You know, I've just sort of like done my best. And at the end of the day, you know, I'm pretty pleased with the performance. I think the results speak for themselves. So I was like, a, I felt like a football player who was pleased with his performance, basically, at the end of it, because I had gone in there with a positive frame of mind and I'd noticed the actual things that people were saying and I was copying them. And that was that. Was that. So that was the little experience that I had there at the cooking class, which was a positive one for my French. I even said at the end, you know, je suis pas fort en français, désolé si je, je comprends pas. You know, I'm not very strong in French, sorry if I don't understand. And the chef was very nice. He was like, oh, well, you know, oh, you know, your French, no, no, your French is very good. And they're all like, oh, no, 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 you're really good. And the chef was like, oh, no, no, your French is much better than my English. And I was there going, <laughs> not sure about that we'll see if if we actually have to engage in a conversation for more than just three sentences you'll see that i'll just uh you know it'll all come come crumbling down but anyway the good things were i had the positive attitude going in i decided to just make a success of it and not worry and enjoy myself um the prosecco the sparkling wine probably helped to be honest um also, I noticed what the other people were saying and I copied them and I prepared things in advance. Okay, so let me just, so that's, you know, that, that was good. That was a really positive experience. And those are the things I'm taking away from that. So the good things, I listened to what the others said and I copied them. I prepared myself in advance in my head. I decided to just enjoy the moment. I went out of my comfort zone. I will remember the little things I noticed and used. So that's the cooking experience. Another thing, another thing in answer to the questions I gave you before is this, reading graphic novels. And I've said this before, right? Graphic novels, these are, you know, comic books, but for grown-ups. We call them graphic novels in English. I love graphic novels in French, and there are so many. Um, and this has been a really good thing in French for me. I, I finished the series called L'Arabe du Futur, the, the Arab of the Future, I think. I've been reading one about the story of the making of the film Star Wars, a really interesting sort of kind of biography of George Lucas and the making of Star Wars. Really cool, like great artwork and really interesting, especially for me as a as someone who's interested in that. Uh, I've, I've been reading one about an Indonesian woman who lives in France and observes funny cultural differences. One about crime and police in Baltimore, which I found really difficult to follow. 
what about a journalist's trip to North Korea and and more. What I love about graphic novels is that you can read direct speech, right? There's just a speech bubble and you can see directly what the person is saying rather than in in um, in books. Sometimes it's sort of in indirect speech, but it's much more like direct spoken English, but written. Um, there's awesome artwork and the pictures definitely help to support my understanding, which is really important. I get a sense of achievement from actually finishing the books. I have found something that I actually really enjoy doing in French here. Now, I don't know why, but a lot of things turn me off. I find social interactions in French to be extremely painful a lot of the time. I know it's kind of sad, but it's true. Um, and a lot of the other things just don't, I don't know, like watching French TV shows. It's, yeah, I've watched quite a few, but it's not necessarily the thing that grabs me. And I don't really know why. But graphic novels are something that work for me. And so that's good. Also, I can go at my own speed. Unlike TV shows, which are harder to keep up with. Um, I tend to, I tend to just read and read. And unfortunately, I sort of skip over the phrases which I don't understand or don't know how to pronounce. And so I should actually stop and check those things, note them down, right, in a, in a notebook or something, and try to use them myself. So that's something I could be doing. More comments on this kind of thing later. Um, also, there's no audio, though. So I can't actually hear the pronunciation. Other things I could do is I should try reading other things like magazine articles or books, not just um, graphic novels. I did buy a book called High Fidelity by Nick Hornby, one of my favourite novels in English. I bought that in French, but I just couldn't get into the habit of reading it. And I think that's because I have quite bad reading habits, actually, even in English. What what happens is I, you know, I'll read a book and it, it relaxes me so much that I actually want to fall asleep because it's all nice and cozy and relaxing. Um, so I don't, I'm not a great reader in English anyway, even though I absolutely adore books. And when I get into the habit of it, I really, I really love getting into a good book. Um, but anyway, so other things I can do is just open my ears and just listen to people around me. Now, this really means getting out of my bubble because I, to an extent, I live in a bubble, you know, I, I go out of my home, I put my headphones on, I'm listening to podcasts in English, I listen to music, I'm just sort of in my own bubble. I need to get out of that bubble, really, and just notice the French which people are using around me. Um, being part of conversations when lots of people talking can, when lots of people uh, are talking, can be very overwhelming and exhausting it's all too much for me and I just become kind of cut off from the French I'm hearing after a while. As I've said before, I feel like I'm watching a game of tennis and after a while, I just can't see the ball anymore. So I'm there like at a dinner party or in a cafe with other people and I'm just like trying to keep up watching the game of tennis and then wait a minute, the, I've lost the ball. The ball's invisible. I don't know what's going on anymore. So, you know, being a bit more gregarious and outgoing would be good. I should stop avoiding social interactions, take out my headphones and be a bit more present. Also, don't beat myself up. Don't care so much. Just enjoy it. Lower my expectations for myself. Take the, take the pressure off my shoulders a bit. Uh, there are millions of other things I could be doing to improve my French. But again, I need to stop sort of bothering myself about that stuff. But I'll perhaps I'll mention some of those things later. But you know what? Part, part of what holds me back with my French is this sense of pressure that I should be a master language learner because I'm a professional language teacher. I put a lot of pressure on myself. And as a result, I have a bad relationship with French and I often avoid it and avoid learning it. You heard me talk about this um, in the episode with Fabio from last year, episode 850 called Any Language You Want, also the one with Rhiannon and Carter. So yeah, I know this has become a therapy session now, uh, but because I make it my business to help people learn a language, and I do know a lot of methods and have so much like pedagogy spinning around inside my head, and that is connected to job-related and career-related pressure, um, 
Because of all that, I am extremely aware of all the things I am not doing in my learning of French. Um, I carry all of that on my shoulders and it causes me to feel quite ashamed of my language learning and shame doesn't help. Uh, it just kills that outgoing, curious, risk-taking, adventurous side that you need to encourage in yourself because that is so important in language learning. It also kills the motivation you need to push through things like slightly boring or unexcited, unexciting uh, language practice exercises you can do which require discipline. All right, everyone, uh, you're in the middle of a, of a reflective um, therapy session here where I'm talking about my, my French, but I'm using this as a case study. There are also other reasons for my lack of progress, including the fact that a lot of people just switch to English when they speak to me. I am actually more capable of having meaningful conversations in English than in French. I can't really speak French at home with my wife because our relationship is based in English and more. As I've said before, my French is not that great in my opinion, but my excuses are improving all the time. So, you know, you, I shouldn't be making excuses. I should just take my own, take responsibility for myself. Anyway, I would like to take all that pressure off my shoulders and just come to this a bit more fresh, as if I have no idea that I'm climbing a big mountain or something. I'm just going for a nice, great walk in the countryside and I'm enjoying the view. That's the outlook I want to have. Okay, I had to take a little break there because I ran out of time and had to go and meet my wife. And um, it's been three hours, actually, and I'm now back in my podcasting room to continue to finish this episode off. And um, if you're watching the video version of this, then you've probably noticed that I've got a baby strapped to my chest. You can just see the very top of his head, you know. Um, you can't, you know, if you're, if you're listening to the audio version and you think, oh, I'm going to rush over to the video version and see the, the, the face of Luke's child. Well, I think you can only see the top of his head. So just to explain, I mean, do you need me to explain? Don't know, but I'm going to do it anyway. So uh, <laughs> this morning, uh, this morning, my wife was looking after our son. This is, this is my son who is with me here to record this the final part of this episode. So my wife was looking after him this morning. Our daughter was at a kind of drawing class with a couple of her friends this morning as well. And the plan was that I would do this episode, finish, and then go and meet them all to have lunch. And then I would take the boy uh, back and look after him this afternoon, uh, having already recorded my podcast stuff in the morning. But no, it didn't work out like that, of course. And I ran out of time. So I had to go and um, meet them all. Um, and we all had lunch together in Italy again. It just we keep going there all the time because we like it so much. And um, so I'm, I'm full of pizza and, and I've got this little baby boy um, strapped to my chest. So he's going to join me. All right. Um, my wife has taken our daughter and a couple of her friends to the cinema this afternoon. So, right, let's get this done. Let's let's finish this off, shall we? Let's see if I can manage to uh, finish recording this episode without him sort of getting a bit too excited or something he he was asleep until about five minutes ago and he i, I came in here thinking it's all right he's asleep you know on the on the metro on the way here he was asleep i was thinking this is fine he'll just be asleep and i'll be able to do the recording i'll, I'll be able to finish it off and i came in here sat down bang instantly awake like that so he's he's okay he's not moving around too much at the moment let's see if we can finish this off Audio listeners, you might be able to hear him breathing. <laughs> that stuff. All right, mate? Oh, he's, he's, he's being very good. He's a good podcast companion. So I was talking about um, my French, right, and using it as a kind of case study for basically considering ways in which we can work on our languages this year. So um, let's see. Here are some things that I can improve, I think. And maybe these are ideas that you can take with you as well. All right. So um, first of all, attitude, right? And I've just talked about that. Basically, I need to take it easy on myself. Um, also, just other little things like, for example, I could keep a vocabulary or grammar notebook, right? This could just be a notebook, a little notebook that I have 
to to you know have near me when I'm reading a graphic novel or something like that, or when maybe just a notebook that I can keep in my pocket that um, I can just quickly note down ideas, or on my phone, you know, um, I could just note down or jot down any little things which I notice and would like to remember, right? So this could be just little phrases, little bits of grammar or structures that keep coming up, little reminders of pronunciation, um, right? These can just be little, maybe like those those things that I notice in graphic novels and I don't really know exactly how to pronounce them or I don't know exactly what they mean and I just kind of skim through because I want to follow the story. Those are the things. I could stop and just kind of investigate those things a little bit and note them down, think about how they're pronounced and maybe try and use them a little bit. And just bit by bit, you know, this is how you... You can build, um, you know, build your vocabulary, which improves your fluency and your confidence and stuff. But also it just means that you end up mapping out the language little bit by little bit. It's a bit like when you play a computer game. If you play Grand Theft Auto, you start the game, you've got the whole map, but most of it is... is um, most of it's hidden from you. Most of it's like in the, in the dark when you look at the map. And when you visit those places those places become visible when you check the map. So your map, you slowly uncover the entire map as you play the game, as you discover different areas. And you little by little, you, you eat into the map, revealing it as you go. And in a way, my French is, is kind of like the, a map like that, but only little patches. I've only visited little patches and so only little, pa only little patches are visible to me when I look at the language as a whole. Does that make sense? So by keeping a vocab notebook, I can help myself to uncover more of that map and get to know the area. And that, that makes it so much easier to then go and visit those places later when you need to, when you need to speak. Like, for example, I was just thinking on the way back here, I was thinking... You know, it, I talked about just the, being able to introduce myself to a group of people in French as if it was a victory, which I mean, it kind of was. But even that is just, I think back and I think that's just so basic, isn't it? Having to introduce yourself. It's not, that's like lesson one. You might seem, you might think that, but I mean, in the real world, you know, when you're living in a country where that language is spoken, even something like just introducing yourself in a party or something can seem like you know, so much more complicated than it is in the textbooks. And there are so many different factors that come in, different sort of unexpected things uh, that kind of come in. My son's just looking up at me like that. Hello, mate. You're right. Yeah. Um, um, but then I was thinking, but it's to give you a better idea of my French, there are just like so many things that I don't really know how to say. For example, I was just thinking, what was it? I'm not supposed to stand here. Am I supposed to stand here? Like this is a, a f just like an example of a bit of French that I don't really know how to say. Am I supposed to stand here? Am I allowed to stand here? Um, uh, sorry, uh, w were you standing here already? Or am I, am I, was this place uh, supposed to be for me? You know, just things like that. Are we supposed to be sitting here? Those sorts of phrases are just like, I really don't know how to put that in French. I've got work to do. I've got work to do, basically. But a, a notebook can help just to note down or jot down any little things which I notice and would like to remember. Little phrases, little bits of grammar, as I said. So I can check an online French dictionary or even chat GPT or other online tools like um, Google Translate or DeepL translator. Now, online translators can be extremely useful tools. Just don't use them to cheat. I mean, don't just use them to, don't just write, if you've got an email to write, don't just write it all in, in, in your first language and then just translate it into English and then just send it. You know, don't do that. You can do that. You can actually learn from the translated version. You can look at it and go, what are, what are the things I was trying to write and see them and then make a mental note of them and use them later? You know, so you can use online translators as a tool. Just don't use them to be lazy. You know, use them to help you learn. Um, I could check my notebook later and remind myself of what I noted down. Um, <laughs> my son is just looking up at me, smiling at me like that. Hello, cutie pie. Hello. Um, I could practice by testing myself, right? So looking at my notebook, I can just maybe cover up some of the words with my thumb and just see if I can remember them and then reveal the words, maybe even reveal them letter by letter by removing my thumb bit by bit, just to help me, just to jog my memory, right? Um, reading things out loud and then running them through Google Translate to hear them 
said to hear them spoken in order to check my pronunciation. So that's not just translating, you know, that's not just making Google Translate say the French I'm I'm learning, but, you know, making it say those things in order for me to hear uh, the pronunciation, right? It's quite a useful, quick, t- quick way of how does how is this pronounced? How is this word or sentence pronounced? Just get Google Translate to say it for you, because there's a little like um, a sort of speaker icon. You can just put some text in in either language and click the speaker icon, and it will say that line for you. I could just devote ten minutes a day to doing some reading or listening in French and then investigating the language I notice with my notebook. Um, You know, again, these are things you could do too. I could try to convert listening to speaking and reading to writing, which means repeat some of the things I've I've heard and write down some of the things I've read. Okay. And again, ChatGPT can help with the writing. Just ask it to correct you and perhaps explain your errors and of course, other chatbots are available. It's uh, and I only mention ChatGPT here in case you can't find or can't afford a human teacher, right? And then lastly, you know, you, me, we could consider taking some one-to-one lessons with a human being, perhaps on iTalky. Uh, and, you know, it's a lot of time management is necessary. I have to sort out my time management for this. All my time is, is used up at the moment, but, you know, I should make time. Here are some questions for you at this point. So what do you think of the things I just said? I mean, did it make you think of your situation at all? Maybe it just made you think of me and my language learning. Uh, Maybe you're just distracted by the fact that my my son is kind of on the podcast today. Uh, But um, maybe, I mean, what did it make you think? To be honest, I don't really want you to analyse and diagnose my language learning situation. I'm not looking for advice or help with my French, right? I'm just using it as a little example. But did it encourage you to reflect on your English? Now, I strongly suspect that your English is better than my French, so your concerns might be a a bit different to mine. You're probably looking for ways to get... Yeah? Do you agree? He does. You're probably looking for ways to get out of the intermediate plateau, or ways of progressing to a very proficient level of English. Uh, okay, am I gonna, <laughs> okay? I'm standing up now. Video viewers, you can't see me anymore because I'm standing up. This is this is mad. You can't see my face. You can just see me bouncing up and down. Uh, I'll see if I can fix that in a second. You're probably looking for ways to get out of the intermediate plateau, right? Or ways of progressing uh, to a very proficient level of English. And you know, I have a I have people with a, a pretty wide variety of English levels listening to this, from pretty low level people who only just manage to follow what I'm saying, and you know, you have my respect to non-native speakers who are really advanced and even teach English as a living, and who just enjoy listening to another teacher do his thing, and want to maintain their level and keep their English alive and fresh. And you have my respect too. So I have a whole wide range of different people with different language levels listening to this. Anyway, with my own example as a case study, I gave some suggestions there of little ways to work on your language learning beyond just listening to this podcast. Maybe that can give you some inspiration or ideas. But really, the main thing I want to get across to you here is the importance of having a positive relationship with the language you're learning. So for me and my French, the things I will hold in mind are A, the positive experience I had at the cooking class, and B, the comfort and enjoyment I experience from reading graphic novels in French. And at this point, I would just like to say, hey, hey you, hey you, yes you, the one listening, leave a comment. Um, I have something to ask you. Please comment on this episode. Spread some positivity in the comments section. I want to encourage you to give any positive comment that you can right now. This will be good for you as it will help you realise something positive about your English and will give you a little bit of writing practice, but it will also be good for everyone else because it can help to create a good vibe and also can give people some inspiration and general support in their English learning. Uh, So what positive experiences have you had in English? What do you love about learning English? What little methods, exercises or resources have helped you with your English? And what have you enjoyed in English lately? You can leave your thoughts in the comments section. Okay, so I'm now going to give a summary of the stuff I've just said. Because, right, sometimes 
I worry that I'm too wordy, right? That I kind of go on and on. And the main core message of what I'm saying gets watered down by the slightly long-winded way in which I put things. It's probably fine, and I just worry too much about these things or something. But anyway, I want this episode to be clear. So I've asked ChatGPT to summarize the things I said to you, okay? Um, I entered the text which I wrote on my sofa a couple of uh, days ago for the, over the last few days and which I have read to you and I asked it to summarize that text for me and this is what it wrote. Okay, so here is here is what it said. This is a summary of, of the, the main points I've tried to make. Okay, so this is ChatGPT speaking now. Do you know what I'm talking to my son? Do you know what ChatGPT is? It's AI. I'm sure you're going to know all about it as you grow up. Anyway, so this is AI speaking now. The text you provided is an extensive reflection on English language learning and personal experiences related to language acquisition. The author encourages listeners to assess their progress over the past year, emphasizing the importance of reflective practice and mindfulness in language learning. The piece delves into various aspects. Number one, looking back, encouraging individuals to consider their progress in English over the past year, reflecting on what has worked positively, identifying experiences that have impacted learning, and acknowledging both positive and negative moments. Number two, acknowledging learning challenges, addressing the common feeling of being stuck in the intermediate plateau, and offering encouragement to persist despite feeling stagnant, emphasizing that progress may not always be immediately visible, but is still happening. Number three, adopting a positive attitude, encouraging a positive mindset, emphasizing that failures and setbacks are part of the learning process, highlighting the importance of perseverance and staying committed to learning. And number four, suggestions for improvement, offering personal experiences with learning French and outlining strategies for improvement, such as keeping a vocab or grammar notebook, practicing reading and listening and exploring speaking opportunities. And number five, the importance of enjoying the learning process, stressing the significance of enjoying the journey of learning a language and removing self-imposed pressure to achieve perfection. Number six, encouragement for sharing experiences, inviting listeners to share positive experiences, effective learning methods and resources in English. And then finally, number seven, future goals, posing questions about how individuals want to spend the next 12 months, emphasizing the value of enjoying time spent learning English and expressing enthusiasm for continuing the podcast journey. Overall, says ChatGPT, the text serves as a reflective guide, encouraging learners to consider their language learning journeys, embrace challenges, find joy in the process, and engage with the learning community by sharing experiences and positive energy. All right, now you might, I don't know what you think about AI and chatbots and stuff, but sometimes listeners on, on YouTube post AI written summaries of my episodes in the comments section. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Have you ever been on YouTube and had to look through comments of different videos and you sometimes see like summaries of the video with um, with timestamps, uh, which, and those summaries have been written by AI. You can do that. You can go onto different AI platforms, enter the URL of a YouTube video, and it will give you a summary with timestamps. And sometimes people add those AI written summaries in the comment section. And to be honest, they're usually a bit wrong. Uh, for example, the AI seems confused by moments of humor or comedy in my episodes or by funny little conversational tangents and doesn't seem to be able to dis distinguish between those tangential moments and the main topic of the episode. And so its summaries are a bit kind of off the mark. I'm talking specifically about Tammy AI here. Tammy AI, which is the AI that does this, right? I don't know if it uses the same engine as ChatGPT. Anyway, that, so T Tammy AI is often kind of wrong in its summaries, as I said, but that summary, which ChatGPT just gave me for this episode is good and I'm happy with it. And by the way, I'm not relying on ChatGPT here overusing it or becoming dependent on it. And I say that because I think some people out there are a bit wary of ChatGPT, 
like ooh, ooh no and they see it as they see any use of it as being a kind of a slippery slope to over reliance on it and therefore a sort of slipping of standards but i think that ai first of all it's not going away right there's no way that it's, it's going away it's here and it's probably here to stay and i think that ai can be used sparingly and to good effect and that summary that i just read from is a, an example of that it came up with that summary in in seconds you know uh i i read it i checked it and uh decided to use it so that's just an example of when you know when ai is useful i think um speaking challenges and we're near the end of the episode here so i said before that i would give you some ideas for speaking uh, and writing challenges so here are some things that you can do to work on your productive skills in English. Okay, so you listening? He's listening. Okay, good. You're a very good listener, aren't you? Okay, you, you do need to work on your speaking skills, though. I'm talking to my baby again here. Listening, excellent. Speaking, we're working on that, aren't we? We'll we get there. It takes time. It takes time, you know. It does. It takes a long time. You've got to do so much listening. Just listening, listening, listening. And then you kind of, you've got to make a load of noises, right? Eh, just any noise. And eventually you refine it slowly, even though you make loads of mistakes. And then eventually you'll get there, right? It takes a, it's a long journey, you know? It didn't take, you know, I can, I can speak like this now, but it's taken me 46 years to get to this stage. Yeah, so don't worry. Anyway, working on your speaking, listeners. In a perfect world, right, you'll just have people to talk to in English. And you can just have these long conversations. Practice expressing yourself for long periods until you're really tired. And then you go to bed and that night you fall asleep with your mind whizzing and whirring with English words. Have you ever had that experience? That's good. That's really great where you spend the day in English and you're like, <laughs> trying to carry on spe everyone speaking English around you and you're trying to keep up with them and you go to bed and you've got English words and phrases spinning around in your head and then you wake up in the morning and then you've got to carry on you know you've got, it keeps going there's never any downtime um, and you really learn a lot then and you really learn to speak then in that situation but unfortunately that's not always possible is it you know especially if you live wherever you live and you don't have english speakers around you and stuff uh you know so for so many of you out there you you don't have this opportunity so what can you do well it's difficult isn't it it's difficult to i don't you know i don't have like the perfect solution you've just got to try and do what you can you know uh, i think it's possible to improve your english you just need to be a bit inventive and and try and experiment and try all sorts of different options until you find something that sort of kind of replicates actually being surrounded by native speakers you know um so you could do something you could try joining a community of english speakers online and you know the first one that comes to mind would be uh, Zdenek's uh, community, um, Zdenek Lucas from Zdenek's English Podcast. He's got a Discord server called the Achievers Chamber, which is a place where you can practice speaking with other learners of English who have a similar level to you. He's got a kind of benchmark level; it's a minimum B two level to enter that. Um, but you can find out the details on his website, uh, teacherzdenek.com, and then you you just click on Achievers Chamber. Uh, to find out the details or you can you can go to italki.com and you should use my link because it will give you a ten dollar discount uh, teacherluke.co.uk slash talk to go to italki and you can go there and you can find a person there to talk to or a teacher to have lessons with and there are teachers from all over the world including from the uk ireland canada australia usa and so on um you know native speakers but also like highly qualified uh teachers who are not native speakers you don't have to speak to native speakers you know that's kind of a misconception it doesn't have to be native speakers you know you can you can definitely learn english from non-native speakers in fact there's a strong argument to say that non-native speakers can be the best people to talk to the best teachers because they've done it themselves and they know exactly what you're going through and they can guide you step by step you know so it doesn't really matter um you know but anyway i talkie there's a, a, a wide range of different people there who uh, you can like take conversation classes or lessons with now you have to pay for this of course and um 
Sometimes it can take time to find the right teacher or conversation partner for you, but it can be an effective way to find someone for speaking practice with feedback and also lessons for specific purposes. And as I said before, if you use my link, you can get a $10 voucher when you buy some lessons on italki, teacherluke.co.uk slash talk, okay? You could also enrol in language classes in a language school near you, like the British Council or whatever you have in your area. You know, that's just old school stuff, going into a classroom with a teacher and other learners and doing it that way. Um, so, yeah, like the British Council, you'll probably find that the, the BC offer courses which include lessons on on vocabulary uh, grammar pronunciation and all that stuff uh, you might not find specific classes only for speaking and feedback though but you'll have to check the, the British Council's website for more information see if they have uh, a teaching center near you and what services they offer they they also have online courses by the way so that's britishcouncilorg slash English slash adults but even if you can't access English speakers or teachers for conversations and language practice and language feedback, you can still find ways to practice your speaking on your own. You just have to think outside the box a little bit and be prepared to do something that seems a bit unconventional, like speaking to yourself, for example. Now, don't worry, it doesn't mean you're weird or strange. And if someone overhears you, like speaking to yourself, like, what are you, who are you talking to? Uh, no one. There's no one here, but I heard you talking. Yeah, I'm just talking to myself. You're talking to yourself. So don't worry if, if someone overhears you and wonders what you're doing. Just, you can just say, it's okay. There's, there's nothing to worry about. Luke told me to do it. And then they'll say, who's, sorry, who's Luke? And then you'll just have to make them listen to Luke's English podcast. And then they'll become Lepsters and my evil plan <laughs> will finally come to fruition. Uh, this is how I will spread my influence around the world person by person until eventually I will take over the world and then free ice cream for everyone. Um, talk to yourself. So try just try talking to yourself out loud in English. Now, there are many things you can talk about or try to do. You might want to consider the sorts of talking that you will have to do, you know, in normal social situations and try to replicate that, right? But in any case, simply the act of attempting to express yourself out loud in English, I think is good practice. When you get stuck and you realize you don't know how to say something you want to say, you can just go to Google Translate again or other translators which are available like DeepL, for example, and just write what you want to say in your language and then translate it into English. Now, this is when, so you're, 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 you're sort of, you're talking, you're, you're speaking to yourself. You're saying, okay, so uh, the weather's pretty nice. Maybe I should go outside, go to the shops. Do I need anything from the shops? I think we need some bananas, don't we? Yeah, do we, do we, do we, do we need milk? Never know if we need milk. No one ever knows if they need, do we need, I can't remember, I'll just get some milk anyway. But then I need to get that, what's that? Oh, what, what do we call it? Um, oh, I don't know. Google Translate. Buh, 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 buh. Oh, okay. Almond powder. Almond powder. Yeah. Wait, it's not almond, but no, no. Almond powder. Okay. Right. You see? So you can just do that. You can also press the audio button to hear how to pronounce it. Now, as I said before, this is not cheating. It's using Google Translate as a tool. And you might think that Google Translate is a bad thing. Do you? Like, it's cheating, it's lazy, it's bad for your English, or it's unreliable, or Google, don't pay taxes. I don't know what you're thinking, but as a tool, it's actually pretty good, as long as it's not the only thing you're working with. And uh, I've said it, you know, I'm going to say it again, there's also ChatGPT with the Google Chrome extension voice control for ChatGPT, which allows you to just ask questions to ChatGPT to, and get it to translate things for you and listen to it say its responses, right? So that's how you can kind of speak to it. Um, you can control things like speaking speed and different accents. Now, it's no replacement for speaking to an actual human, but if you see it as a tool for certain kinds of controlled practice, it can be pretty useful, especially for error correction. Um, that's ChatGPT with the Google Chrome extension, voice control for ChatGPT. Um, so, 
consider using things like Google Translate or ChatGPT as tools to help you practice on your own. All right. You all right, mate? Here, 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 here. Have this, have this. There you go. I'll just put his little dummy in his mouth. He's going to be a little bit more comfortable now. Got anything to say? He's like, oh, you're talking too much. Too, this episode's too long. When's it going to stop? Okay, I get the idea. I know, I know. It's, it won't be long, okay? So, <laughs> if you don't know what to talk about, here are some ideas. So, you could do a commentary. So that's just give a commentary of all the things you're doing while you're doing them. So I'm standing here, I've got my baby son strapped to my chest with the baby carrier and oh, my back's hurting a little bit, but I'm, do I'm doing an episode of my podcast. So I have to, I have to finish this because if I don't finish this today, it's going to, uh, there's, I've got, I'm busy for the next few days and then it will take ages and I need to get this episode done and published so I can move on to the next one. So we've got to just get through this, you know, just give a commentary on what you're doing. Second thing is you could do a commentary in the past. So that's while you're doing things, talk about them as if they happened in the past. So I spoke on the podcast and then, or like, so I had a shower and then I brushed my teeth and then I, I did up my, the buttons on my shirt, you know, while you're doing, you talk about them as if they were in the past and that's, that's to practice you know, putting everything in the pa in past forms, right? Because you, you've got to make sure that you practice doing that, like the, those ed endings, those irregular verbs, or whatever. Uh, shadowing as well, right? You all know about this, don't you? So you can listen to a short audio clip or video in English and try to imitate the speaker's pronunciation, intonation, and rhythm. Uh, repeat the sentences or phrases immediately after hearing them, or even at exactly the same time that you hear them, which sounds weird, but it can work strangely. And there are specific episodes in the premium subscription designed to help you do this. Did you know I have, I've got a premium podcast? Did you know that? Yeah. Just teacherluke.co.uk slash premium in info. Yeah. Did you, got, did you get that URL? All right, I'll take that as a yes. It's like, yeah, yeah, I've got it. I'm already a subscriber, Luke. No worries. Number four. Record yourself. Um, you could pick a topic or a short passage, maybe a topic from a podcast episode or a passage from an episode with a transcript, like a story episode. You could read one of those stories, read it aloud and record your voice. Then listen to the recording and analyze your pronunciation, intonation and fluency, especially if there's a, another recording that you can compare it to. Take note of areas that you could improve. Uh, number five, you could do a monologue or ramble challenge. So choose a topic or an object around you and just talk about it for a few minutes as if you're giving a presentation. Maybe you could sell it, right? So for example, so, okay, well, I've got here a microphone. It's a, uh, a handheld uh, microphone, the sort of thing that a singer would use uh, during a concert. And I've had this microphone for, a, for quite a long time, but I never use it. It's by, by a company called Blue. This is a Blue Encore 100 handheld dynamic microphone. I mean, obviously, I'm talking about microphones, and obviously I know about microphones, but you, you could choose something else that you know about. I just happen to know about this. And I never use it, um, so I'm planning to sell it, okay? So, by the way, if you want to buy this microphone, then just make me an offer, okay? Make me an offer for this microphone. I think I, 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 caught, I spent about £100 on this when I originally bought it, it's virtually flawless. It has no scratches or damage on it at all. It's, it's hardly ever been used. Um, you can see me actually using this microphone in some episodes. For example, there's the episode with, called Being a Tourist with Paul Taylor. And Paul, I think, uh, uses this microphone during the recording of that episode. And a number of other iconic episodes from the back catalogue were recorded with this microphone. But these days, I don't really use it very much because of handling noise. It just... On a podcast like this, you can hear it. You can hear my hand on the microphone a bit too much. <laughs> right that's why i don't use it but if you want to buy it you can just make me an offer make me an offer i can't refuse and we could do business you know just talk to me 
Um, so anyway, you could just talk about a, an object that you're trying to sell or describe. You can discuss its features, its uses, its history, or any related information. Number six, you could do a role play, act out conversations between different characters or personas. There's someone knocking on the wall. Someone knocking on the wall, the floor, or the ceiling. I don't know. But, I mean, I don't think that's me. I think that's just someone... I'm going to hammer a nail in the wall. I think it's someone putting up a picture or something. They're not. Then it's not someone telling me to stop talking. Unless it is. Maybe my neighbour's like that. Dun, 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 dun. That's enough, Luke. Now, it's been it's been at least two hours now. This episode. This is getting ridiculous. Okay. All right. All right. All right. You get the idea, though, everyone. Right. Describe and explain. Describe an object. Debate with yourself. Storytelling. You know. Uh, sing along karaoke, sing along to songs, read aloud, read out books, uh, mix and match. There's lots of things you can do. Um, I mean, I could go on. I really could go on. If you want to read more um, about writing challenges as well, and I, I've wrote some good stuff about writing challenges here. You could read that on the PDF, okay? There's, there's more here, including asking ChatGPT to give you a writing task. Uh, and then you do that and chat G I've given you a, um, a prompt, which you can use, right? The prompt could be this. Can you give me a short writing task to help me practice my English? I'd like to write a business email. Can you give me some feedback on my writing and also provide me with an example answer for your task and chat GPT will do it like that. And it will give you feedback to your responses. For example, <laughs> what did I write? I gave a sort of a, an example bad answer right, to his task. The, so the chat GPT gave me a task. The task was this. Okay, where is it? So here's the scenario. You work for a software company and you need to, to email a client regarding a delay in delivering a project. The client has been eagerly anticipating the completion of the project and is expecting it by the end of the month. Craft an email to notify the client about the delay, explain the reasons behind it and reassure them about a revised timeline. So you would write your email, send it into ChatGPT in, after its response and it will give you feedback on it. Also, it gives you a sample answer which you can use as a as a template but i wanted to test it so i gave a really bad answer here's my really bad answer to that task sorry mate but i ain't done that thing you wanted because shit got intense and i had to stay at home sorry about that can you give me some more time though and it'll get done proper in it bruv all right boss that was my email and here's the feedback that chat gpt gave me and i have to say it showed great restraint here because if if one of my students had given me this work then i would have been i wouldn't have been quite so professional in my <laughs> feedback but chat gpt said your message has a casual tone which may not be suitable for a professional business email to maintain a more formal and professional approach consider the following revised version so it basically just said the whole tone of your email is wrong it's far too casual and then it kind of gave me an example answer which would be much better now if you wrote um a more full fully formed email it might give you more specific feedback um okay so that brings us to the end of the episode. All right, there we go. That's the end of the episode. I trust that you have not turned into a skeleton uh, with headphones on, but you know, let me know, right? Just eat, uh, send a comment in, write a comment in the comment section saying, thanks Luke, I'm not a skeleton. And then everyone else will be confused because they didn't listen to the, the whole episode. Um, but anyway, well done for getting to the end. I trust that you have not turned into a skeleton with headphones on. Do let me know that you're still breathing and that you found this episode to be useful, okay? Now, what about that vocabulary highlighted in that lurid green color on the PDF? And as I said before, I will devote a premium episode to this vocabulary. So you'll need to be a premium subscriber to get that. Did I mention my premium subscription at all during this episode? Did I? I don't, I'm not sure I did. Anyway, you can get the information at teacherluke.co.uk slash premium info. But here is a list of all those highlighted expressions for your reference. 
did you notice this vocabulary in the episode? So we've got words and phrases like highlighted in lurid green, turning over a new leaf, hence, hence the title of the show, the uninitiated, to strike you as being obvious, to rub off on you, inspiring words of wisdom to impart, sage-like advice, to lower your expectations, to get swept up in what I'm saying, a renewed sense of positivity and possibility, uh, to survey the year that you've just completed, the forthcoming 12 months, to take stock of your English, uh, I don't know, actually, uh, to be mindful about your relationship with English. Um, you're not really aware of the ways that you're learning English. The, to be aware of something, to be mindful about something, to be aware of something, to reflect on something, to fit a description. Metacognitive, um, analyzing, strategizing, a breakthrough moment, a plateau, to stick with it, to get stuck in a rut, to go over the same ground, <clears throat> feelings of reward, moments of triumph or glory, they're far and few between, to put in a lot of hours, to see the bigger picture, a long journey rather than a trip. What's the difference between a trip, a journey and travel? Um, a long flat plane, uh, to feel disheartened, to pay off, the more blah, 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 the better. So the more you're exposed to it, the better your position is. Uh, to be on the spot, to keep the faith, to keep your chin up, to shake things up, to adopt new habits. When the need arises, a select group of people, best consumed as part of a balanced diet, a negative mindset, to have what it takes, a positive mental attitude, a sense of drive, to put your best foot forwards, to build on something, upward trajectory, to reflect on something, to expand on something, graphic novels, to be out of your bubble, to get cut off from something, uh, to be gregarious, to be outgoing, to beat yourself up, to hold yourself back, or if something holds you back, to push through something, to take it easy on yourself, to note down or jot down something, uh, to diagnose something, uh, to strongly suspect something, to be wordy, to get watered down, to be long-winded, to delve into something, um, to be off the mark, a slippery slope, to be used sparingly or to be used to good effect, whizzing and whirring, and to come to fruition. That is the end of the episode. Okay, everyone? Well done. You made it to the end. Um, and uh, I hope that you enjoyed the episode. All right, you okay? Hello, mate. You're still awake. How are you doing down there? I'm talking to my little baby son who has been very, very good. Such a good boy. Well done. Very proud. Um, okay, what about you guys? How are you? I think I'm going to stop the episode now because otherwise it'll get so long that no one will, that new listeners will look at the, the length and they'll, they'll, they'll think, oh, no way, I can't do it. That's, that's one of the reasons why I've got this slight hang up about the length of these episodes is because I know that new listeners probably find that to be very daunting. So for that reason, I'm going to stop here. And as I said before, probably the next episode will be a rambling one where I'll just talk about a whole bunch of other things that I wanted to talk about, which aren't really anything to do with learning English. Okay. Good. Nice one. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed the episode, like, uh, subscribe, you know, comment, share with your friends and all that sort of thing. Have a lovely day, morning, afternoon, evening or night. And I will speak to you in the next episode of this podcast. But for now, that's it. OK, so all that remains to be said is goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.